recording. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's Mike and Nancy back again from Phlebotomy Career Training. Um, we're going to take a little bit more time to discuss the ProMetric test that all the CNAs want to uh, take once they graduate from an approved CNA program. Absolutely. And Mike, did you want to show them some of the certifications, what they need to mail in? Certainly. So when you go to do your ProMetric, when you send everything in, you're going to send in copies. You want to send in copies of, just hold that up, certification. Of course, your certification here. Huh? Then we have the letter, two times of ProMetric, but you want to send a copy of as well. And then, of course, here, this is not necessary for Tops or Prometric, but of course, we always include a letter of recommendation. And then we have our resume here. And what we'll need as well will be your transcript. So, the three things that you have to make copies of to send to Prometric are your transcripts, your letter of course completion, and your certification. In addition, you can go to the state uh, ProMetric uh, website. Everybody has, every, according to each state, this is the Michigan Nurse Aid Competency Evaluation Registration Form. And when you fill one of these out, um, you want to fill it out in its entirety, and your school should help you fill this out. Um, one of the things that you want to keep in mind, it says, have you been previously certified as a nurse aide in Michigan? Now, if you're working in home care, if they're working in um, home care, or if they're they're working in adult foster care, you're not a CNA. The definition of a CNA means that you're working in a convalescent home or a hospital under the authority of a registered nurse at all times. So, if you, when you check this box and it says, "Have you previously tested or been certified in the state of Michigan?" or your state, um, or if you're currently working as a CNA, you would say no. Now, if, you, if they were CNAs, they have to check the box. Absolutely. If you, were, if you ever took the exam, that means that you were, one time were registered, and you have to check the box. So then even if uh, their time has lapsed as a CNA, uh, they would still be checking that box. Yeah, and, and the important, that's a good point, Mike. Um, you have one year from the graduate from graduating from your class to take this exam. Our advice is don't schedule your exam really close to the to, to when your uh, period ends because a lot of times they're booked. And even if you're a few weeks past that date, you're going to have to take the course all over again now, and that's a lot of money. Um, so you really want to take your exam. Right, schedule it as soon as you can after graduation. And speaking of the exam as well, uh, it's always recommended, if possible, to take a brief refresher course uh, before, uh, just to review your skills and whatnot, uh, to have that confidence going into the exam. Yeah, I think confidence is really important. It it, it really it really is. Oftentimes, the nerves of the exam itself can cause an applicant to uh, misperform a skill or something of that nature, which they could have under other circumstances, easily fulfill the applications of that skill. Absolutely. Uh, I, I have to agree with you as far as the, uh, the, like a type of review or boot camp. The nice thing about the boot camps is that once you get your authorization to test in the mail, again, that's your, um, that's your form that allows you to schedule an exam. With a lot of the boot camps that they have, um, they're like, they range anywhere between fifty and a hundred dollars. Um, the nice thing about the boot camps is they give them nine skills, yes. and they review for eight hours nine skills. Now remember, they test they can test you on twenty one. If you go to the boot camp and then test <coughs> out at the boot camp, like the following day, you'll know exactly like three out of the nine that you that you reviewed. They have familiarity with their tester yes. from the boot yes. camp, and so that those stress levels are kind of reduced by attending a boot camp because many boot camps will test you out the following day or that week, 
So yeah, I agree. I think I think that that would really help them. Um, with your Prometric, remember you're going to send in a check or money order for seventy six dollars and fifty cents, and then the day that you go to test, you have to have a check or money order made out to the um, institution that you're testing at for a hundred dollars. So the total fee across the U.S. is one seventy six fifty. So a lot of students, you know, they they they. Uh, Sometimes they forget what they need to send in, and we wanted to review with you um, what important documents you need to send in. And once again, don't ever send originals, because very rarely will you get those back. Uh, if I could ask you, Mike, uh, what, what are some of your, you, you graduate a lot of the CINAs, you yes. make out a lot of their certifications. Absolutely. Um, what words of advice do you have to these people, if you could? You know. Them? Speaking of the form that they're going to send in to Thompson Prometric, one thing that I'd like to point out is it's very important, as Nancy was saying, to make sure that you take your time to properly fill out the form itself. Uh, every once in a while, there'll be a situation where uh, a graduate doesn't fill out the form properly, uh, and then thusly they're delayed in taking their exam. Uh, you know, and as we spoke about, you always want to try to schedule your exam as soon as possible. Uh, upon graduation, absolutely, and uh, and that that would really be the main point that that I would like to make about that is just make sure that you take your time uh, and review it carefully. If you have any questions, uh, call your school, speak with an administrator. Uh, they can walk you through the form, and they're always happy to do that. You know. Yeah, and you know, I I just have to say, you have to learn how to deal with the stress levels. Uh, they're just they're just overwhelming, and it's hard when you don't they don't know who's going to test who it is. Yes, who's when test they're walking them. in blind. And, and you know sometimes these testers can actually be a little bit I don't know I don't want to say condescending, but um, sometimes it, you almost feel like they're out there to deliberately make the student nervous, and they're the students are nervous enough as it is, and then to top to top things off, they have a a live actor for your feeding, uh, for bedpan, for uh, oral care, denture care. So now compounding that they've got that one uh, nurse who's an authorized tester who they don't know if they're going to skew their results. Yes. So some people are nice, some people aren't so nice, just like nursing school. Um, it, it, and so you, you, you don't know. So you've got that, you know your material, but now you're stressed because you're not sure how these people are going to react to you. And then you also have uh, uh, a live actor. And did you know the live actors, they're not allowed to tell the student uh, if, if they're doing it right. Right or, or incorrectly, yes. Yeah, I mean, they may not even say anything to you which even makes it more awkward. Because if you were with a real patient, you know, a real patient will greet you. Yes, they'll, yes. They'll, if you put a pillow, uh, offer them a pillow behind their back, they'll say, oh yes, thank you, that feels better. A lot of times these actors won't give them any feedback whatsoever. So you have to remember that if it's four to five pillows for positioning, if you ask them if you, if you put two pillows uh, to position them and you ask them if they're okay, they're not going to tell you. Or they, they may say, yeah, I'm fine, but that doesn't take away from the fact that they still have to do the yes. five pillows. Do you know what I'm saying? There's the five skills are as such. Hand washing is with, with all of them. And then they're going to choose three skills. As we said in our previous video, it will be a water skill, a measuring skill, and a physical skill. And then the fifth one is your indirect care. And indirect care is very, very important. Uh, by indirect care, we mean, uh, you know, opening the curtains, asking them, uh, you know, would you like the curtains open? Would you like your TV on? Would you like some water? Um, so we hope that this will help you, and we want to thank you for viewing. Uh, thank you so much. Until next time. Bye.